Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I would like to, uh, if you have never listened to this lady, which I had not until yesterday, she was introduced to me at, at the Grafted in Team Jesus meeting we had last night, or maybe it was the night before, but anyway, then um, this one is from January the 18th, which was yesterday. This, this is Tuesday, January the 19th. It's 5.42 p.m. Okay, this is, uh, the channel is called Believe Acts 2 Dash Harvest. Okay, um, let's see, the video starts off, the Lord gives her a scripture and then a message. So I'm going to play just the first couple seconds that tells the scripture, and then I'm going to jump ahead because I want you to, you can click on the link and go listen to it, or you can open your Bible and read it yourself, okay? All right, so let me play just the first little bit. January 18th, 2021. The destruction of D.C. Okay. Oh. This is a warning word from the book of Micah, chapter 3. There you go. <laughs> I cut it, cut it off too soon. Okay, now we're going to go up to the 2 minute and 48 second mark where the message begins. This is a warning message from the Most High God, creator of all the earth. The destruction of D.C. He gave me the understanding that D stands for demonically. C stands for controlled. It's Washington, D.C. demonically controlled. That's Both true. sides of this corrupted aisle serve Lucifer at the highest levels. That's right. Don't be deceived. Both sides are corrupt. Both sides are evil. That's right. The Holy Spirit had me utilize this picture of Obama fiddling while Washington, D.C. is on fire. Today, January 18th, 2021, the Heavenly Father repeated multiple times in my spirit in a horrible, horrible feeling in my spirit. And this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will destroy D.C. I will repeat that. I will destroy D.C. Thus says the Sovereign Lord Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Two days ago, I asked the Lord, what is the outcome of this? This circus of stupidity and distraction called the election. And this is what the Lord told me two days ago. That would be on January 16, 2021. Obama is coming back. Now is the time for all to seek the Holy Spirit, to search our heart and repent of all sins. Amen. Forgive all who have forgiven who have sinned against you. Amen. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, stop now. Ask Him to forgive you from all your sins, to come into your life and be your Lord and Savior, Amen. to help you know Him, to help you serve Him, to help you hear His voice and to do His will. The destruction of D.C. has been decreed by the Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. It is not a Democrat versus a Republican. They're all corrupt. They all serve Lucifer at the highest level. Obama is coming back. Get ready while the book of Revelation unfolds and the son of perdition steps on the global stage. Lord, help us all in Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. Amen. Okay, so you heard what <clears throat> the Lord gave her, and, well, you heard that. So um, when she 
uh, read the book of Micah, it, it was clear, it was talking like it was about Israel, but you see, we're connected to Israel. Um, we're also connected to the Vatican. It's like, it's like we're Vatican 2.0 and we're Israel 2.0. That's why there's so many Jews here and they're so wealthy. So anyway, I'll end it here and I say I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over each and every single one of us and our devices and our internet connection. And with that, I'll say, uh, listen, uh, let me just add this. If you're new to my channel and you heard what she said about making Jesus your Lord and Savior, on my home page, if you just click up, click on my name, it should take you, when I get on, it shows the video of salvation. It's like five to six minutes, how to be saved, how to know you're saved if you're not sure. Because you might have prayed some prayer after somebody even got baptized, but you never really went anywhere, so you don't know if you're saved or not. What I mean is they, you didn't really get into your Bible. You didn't really feel love for the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Then you're probably not saved. It takes commitment. You know John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have life everlasting. The word believeth, if you do a strong concordance research and read all down below it, the possibilities of what that word means, it's to commit, to obey, to make a commitment with, a covenant with, to make, it's like getting married. You make a covenant with the Lord that you don't just believe in him because even the demons believe and tremble. Satan knows everything about Jesus. He knows the word better than any of us, better than any pastor. I don't care how many PhDs are behind his name. That Satan knows more about the word and what it means than any of them because Satan runs the world. Satan rules from the Vatican. Oh my, but the One World Trade Center is also the third temple and they do sacrifices up on the top. Did y'all know that? I'm not sure if I shared that video or not or I was going to maybe and didn't. Uh, but they showed like a Google Earth where you can see from the top the buildings, the tops of the buildings. And they showed uh, what the One World Trade Center looked like. And you can see where it looks like a pit. Well, you can Google it, do Google Earth and put in... One World Trade Center. That should do it. I can't remember the address right off. There's a, there's part of it has the, an address of 222 some street. And part of it is another street. Same building. Another address for another street. Maybe because it's on a corner. That's possible. But anyway, uh, the way she was describing it and showing it, it was really weird. So... What I wanted to say is that next in line from Satan and the Pope are the Jesuits. And they have infiltrated all seminaries, colleges, school systems, even daycares. They get educated and they work their way in and work their way to the top. They've been doing that for years and years so that now they run all of them and they make the rules. They get the board. 
<laughs> My dog is so funny. Um, they make the rules and they lie. They lie to the seminarians. The seminarians come out of their, their uh, program, graduate, believe in wholeheartedly. Um, things like once saved, always saved, or there's no need for the Holy Spirit baptism because all those gifts of the Holy Spirit died out with the apostles. They really believe that. So if you talk about talk praying in tongues around them, they say, oh, that's demonic. I know because I experienced it. I had a Southern Baptist preacher who was so nice. And he say, got my uncle saved after two years of arguing with him. He'd come around about every three months and try to have a conversation. After I tried to have a conversation, and he shut me down quick. And he loves me like I was his daughter. I was like their daughter because my aunt and uncle didn't have any children. And anyway, he told me, I said, Uncle Wilford, I'd like to talk to you about, about my Jesus or something like that, about how you feel about Jesus. And he said, you don't want to know what I think about your Jesus. Just like that, real mean and hateful. And he he's always been real lovingly loving to me. That was a demon straight up talking through him. Anyway, so I just started praying. You know, I just shut up. I couldn't say a word. I wanted to start crying, and I was like, you know, I changed the subject real quick. As soon as I could think of something, I was flabbergasted that he would talk to me that way. Well, anyway, I just started praying for him. And I mean, I prayed a lot and prayed hard that he would, that God would send somebody else that he would listen to. And sure enough, his nephew sent a pastor from his church, a Southern Baptist church, and had conversation. Now, he knew his word. He knew his word, and he firmly believed that the gifts of the Holy Spirit died out with the apostles because he learned it in Bible school, in his seminary. See what I'm talking about? This is one example of how a good, godly man can be so wrong. Well, anyway, my uncle had got, uh, he had taken his flu shot and pneumonia shot, and not very many days later was Christmas. And his sister came over sick with the flu. She came on over to have dinner. Well, who misses Christmas, right? Well, she gave him the flu. My aunt didn't get it. Her flu shot must have worked. Or she was, they took all kinds of vitamins, all kinds, but it didn't work. I think between the flu shot and her maybe hugging him, maybe she didn't hug my aunt. I don't know. He ends up in the hospital by New Year's. And then he he called me and said, oh, I'm feeling so much better. He said they started me on antibiotics. This is how close we were. He calls me from the hospital on his bill uh, somehow. And because this was Louisiana. And anyway, that night my aunt calls and she said, He's in a coma, and um, they almost lost him, and, and he just went, like, from okay to whoop, almost died. He was in there for weeks and weeks, and he would, he died, and they'd bring him back. He died, and they'd bring him back. Five times he died. Well, I think he saw hell, because when, when right before you die, a lot of people that have been in comas actually come out of it for like several hours. It's like their body's one last chance to say goodbye. I don't know what that's about. 
Well, he came completely out of it. And they took the tube out and he said, I got to talk to that preacher. I got to talk to him right now. And they got that pastor up there from an hour's drive away. And he led him through the sinner's prayer. And, and my uncle said, what about this baptism thing? I want to be baptized and, and, and a nurse. And, and this pastor got him down to PT into a whirlpool and they got him baptized. Okay, praise the Lord, right? That night he died and they couldn't bring him back. So, so see, he, he was in that one last chance stage. I think God is just so wonderful. Look, y'all, if any of you are not yet born again, please think about it. You're talking heaven versus hell forever. God doesn't send you to hell. You choose to go there. So please, if that, if you go to my home channel and you see my video on the two raptures, well, at least that'll give you hope that after the first rapture, you have it. There's another one not far behind it. But you're going to have to refuse that vaccine. Okay, I had to say it. Don't forget that I have a channel on bitshoot.com and it's called Jeannie Loves Jesus. Okay, you just I'll put it in and my new email. If you want notifications, if I ever get kicked off of here, if I get another community strike, I'm off of here for good. So take note, you can write to my old email, but I prefer all my YouTube people to write to genie.hardesty at yahoo.com. Okay, so it'll be real easy for me to shoot out of the email saying, uh, hey, or here's, well, actually, BitChute sends me an email saying my video's ready. I can just forward that to everybody I got an email on. Going through my Gmail account is very, very difficult because there's several, several other kinds of people in there that are not interested in my videos they don't want it i gotta pick and choose okay was this name from youtube or was this a vendor or whatever you see what i mean uh, there's hundreds and so if you wouldn't mind if you want to be notified please write me just say a uh, hi add me to you know I'm just letting you add me to your Yahoo list. So you have to write to genie.hardesty at yahoo.com. If my channel goes down, I did do have another channel under Genie Hardesty, and it's a red cardinal is the picture of it. It's from four years ago. And my hair is way up to here, really short. It's hilarious to me not to see my hair so short. But there's one video on it, okay? So I do have that channel. All right. So with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.